Welcome to Valley Mobile Automotive. In a previous video, I replaced a clock spring on a Subaru Forester. I'll post that video link up above. But in the comments, someone asked, well, what is a clock spring? So in this video, we'll be discussing what is a clock spring, uh, what does it do, what's its function, what are its common failure points, and how can we test them? Now, clock springs have been around uh, for quite some time. I'm, I'm going to show you a quick uh, visual. This is a, a steering wheel and I have a wire coming out of the steering wheel. So back in the day when they used to have just a horn, it'd be one wire that they had to worry about. But over time, uh, the introduction of airbags, the introduction of cruise control on the steering wheel controls, um, your radio information center. Now your steering wheel has so many buttons with a lot of wires. So let me show you a quick visual of the issue that had to be overcome. So this is the setup. I have the steering wheel is able to pivot and the wire represents like a horn wire or any wire that has to come from the steering wheel and go down the steering column. So just one wire for demonstration. It goes down as close to the center as possible. Let me show you the other side. Just comes out and then down the steering column. So if you can see this wire, notice as I turn the steering wheel, what happens? The wire gets twisted. You can see it up here getting twisted. It wraps around the steering column. I move it back and it comes back, but the opposite direction, it gets twisted again. So you can see this wire being stretched, twisted, rubbed on over and over. That's an issue. Well, with a quick visual aid, you can see the issue. Introduce the clock spring. What a clock spring allows is wires on one side of the steering wheel and wires on the other side of the steering wheel to remain stationary relative to where they are. So if it's on the steering wheel, it can move but this side doesn't move. So now you don't get that binding, that twisting of the wires. So you have a connector on one side and a connector on the other side. And in between inside is its connection points that allow this to move with the steering wheel while this stays stationary with the column. Well, how does it work? What makes this thing tick? Let's pull it apart. Now that I got all the clips off, let's pull it apart and you'll notice a tape inside. That tape has little copper uh, wire tracks on it and each wire track in this tape represents a pin on this connector. So this connector has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 uh, pins. On this side, this connector will have 14 pins. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14. And then we'll have 14 tracks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. A little more because I didn't count the airbag. But either way, each connector pin represents one of these copper tracks on this tape. You can see pretty easily how each pin on this connector corresponds to one of these tracks on this tape. So one pin equals one copper track. Now how this works is as the steering wheel is turned, let me see, you'll, you'll notice it here, it'll wrap the tape up on this side and it'll take tape away on this side. Or if it's turned the opposite direction, this side will wind the tape up while the other side dispenses the tape. So it's kind of like a gearing where one wraps, the other unwraps. Or this one wraps, this one unwraps. So what are the common failures on these? Well, any issue with one of these copper tracks can be an issue. I don't see anything particular on this one, this was an intermittent issue. So it may be hard to see 
where a track is having problems. But that's where an issue can come up, is in one of these tracks. Testing one of these is pretty simple by using a multimeter set to ohms. This connector here corresponds to this connector. So one of these pins and one of these pins should have continuity between them. Let's find this out. And you would need a wiring diagram to figure out which one matches which one. Or you could just probe all of them. So I'm hooked up to this one here. This was the steering column side. This was the steering wheel side. So one of these should be. And I just guessed it. So 0.4 ohms. If I try a different pin. OL, OL, OL. So I just guessed the right one the first time. So that 0.5 or 0.4 ohms is good continuity. If we were missing continuity, let's uh, go ahead and cut this tape. Nope, not that one. Cut this side. And we just lost continuity because the tape has been cut. That would represent like a break or a defective part uh, in that copper track. Then we would get an OL when we are supposed to get an ohms or a continuity. So it's pretty simple uh, to test these. Now if it was an intermittent issue, I'd be doing this while turning the steering wheel to the left or to the right and watching for a continuity to drop out. You can also do this with a test light as we did in the original diagnosis video. So clock springs use simple technology but are a pretty cool invention. They allow the steering wheel to be turned without twisting or binding or stretching any of the wiring. Clock springs for the most part are pretty stout. Um, they rarely have issues but sometimes uh, they can become defective. Subaru for this model, this was a 15 Forester, uh, I don't know exactly how many years it spanned, but they had an issue um, with these clock springs, a very common issue on these. But normally, clock springs are pretty robust um, little pieces of, of equipment on your car. Rarely do they go bad. But if they do, you may not notice anything detrimental except now that button doesn't work. Whatever track that got disrupted or multiple tracks, those buttons will no longer work. It may be the horn. Uh, it may be your cruise control or whatever it is. If for some reason the airbag system isn't working, then you'll have that airbag light on. Sometimes that can be the issue within the uh, clock spring itself or the roll connector itself has to do with the airbag side. Well, then you'll get an airbag light on the dash. Otherwise, uh, you probably won't notice the issue except when you go to push that button. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one. All right, now that I got all the clips off, whoa, that wasn't supposed to happen.